What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today we're talking about some PlayStation drama involving the business of Square Enix. For the last couple years, there has been some sort of secret unknown partnership between PlayStation and the very famous RPG maker Square Enix. Their games have not only been coming to PlayStation, but a lot of them have been straight up exclusive. Back to back games like Final Fantasy and Foam Stars and all sorts of stuff has only been coming to the PS5 and it seems like that may have backfired. Let's take a look at it because today they have officially announced Square Enix is going to stop even attempting exclusives because it's losing them so much money. Let's discuss. Hi, I hope you're having a great day. If you could give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, this news just came out a couple hours ago, and to be honest, it feels like the internet is mostly celebrating it, because it sounds like this new direction, the idea is to try and make it so anybody who wants the games can buy it. Look at this. If we could start getting Final Fantasy games day one on PC, that would be amazing for gamers. Now, personally, I'm obsessed with Final Fantasy. It is my favorite franchise of all time. So this idea of making PC ports alongside the main games, this to me makes perfect sense. I mean, like what they're doing right now with Final Fantasy 16, where they completely made the game and all DLC on PS5 and then rebuilt the game for PC, stuff like that is a weird gap. But a lot of people are being like, all right, uh, Sony is going to try and buy their entire company. I don't think so, but let's actually take a look at this article. So this is over on IGN, and we're going to take a look at a couple journalists who have been arguing about this because some of the points made in this financial report, they're definitely up for interpretation. So here it is. Square Enix has announced a significant company reboot amid tumbling profits. So today they decided to report their financial sort of performance, how they did last year. And it sounds like for the most part, they are selling more games, and yet their profit is going down. It sounds like, the, you know, despite the fact that Final Fantasy 16, the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters, Foam Stars, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, so many of these games came out and were successful, but somehow it wasn't enough. They made $52 million of an operating loss. They lost $52 million despite the fact that they dropped a mainline Final Fantasy, a Final Fantasy remake, and also totally new games as a service project, but I think that's part of the reason they're losing money, to be honest. But here we go. Final Fantasy 16 and Rebirth both launched exclusively on the PlayStation 5. And Square Enix has announced sales for FF16, and they said that went well. But they've been pretty secretive about how successful on paper the FF7 Rebirth project has been. So they said this. We are suffering an incomplete journey to better profitability in HD game development. We've had many games launch, but some failed to live up to profit expectations, especially outsourced titles and some AAA stuff. So it seems like they're talking about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth at least being included in that. So we're going to take a look at the financial forecast, but I think what the initial knee-jerk reaction is is definitely the fact that Video game development is getting more and more expensive, and when I think about a game like Forspoken, which, let's face it, this game sucked. I hated on it. Everybody hated on it. In fact, I've never mentioned this in a video before, but uh, Square Enix, when I reviewed this and I roasted it, they were not happy with me. <laughs> but because of that game's immediate failure, they ended up shutting down the studio that made it. it almost not even six months after the game came out and totally bombed, the studio just got completely shuttered in an effort to, I guess, you know, stop losing money on, you know, unsuccessful profit endeavors. But it is weird to think that they, maybe that would have been more successful if you could have bought it on PC day one. But going back to the article, 
In response to tumbling profits, Square Enix announced that it's trying to do a Square Enix reboot and Awakens. They have a three-year plan for rebooting long-term growth. This involves a rethink across all parts of business, but the highlight is a shift to a multi-platform strategy. Square Enix said it will aggressively pursue a multi-platform strategy that includes Nintendo platforms, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Now, it is interesting that we are about to get the next Nintendo Switch. There have been a lot of very confirmed leaks that the Nintendo Switch is actually going to be a, a little bit more powerful than the PlayStation 4, uh, a little bit weaker than an Xbox Series S. So it will definitely be able to play bigger open world games like a lot of the more recent Square Enix projects have been. But a lot of people are actually talking about this because there is a little bit debate as to how successful or unsuccessful these games have been. Right now, Final Fantasy is still on top. Final Fantasy is definitely the big money maker for Square Enix, but they did also launch Dragon Quest Monsters, The Dark Prince, which I'll be honest, I completely forgot existed. But it sounds like the major thing is that the typical money makers for Square Enix has been their B tier stuff, the stuff that's definitely not getting like crazy headlines, but things like their MMO, Final Fantasy XIV, I love that. It has a subscription, so a lot of times they make hundreds of millions of dollars on that. It has been a down year for the game because the next expansion comes out this year. There's always that lull where before the next big release, everybody stops playing temporarily to kind of, uh, I don't know, save up their energy for the next big push. But Here's the other thing. They put a lot of money into Dragon Quest Champions, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Essentially, a lot of their cell phone stuff ended up bleeding money. Well, here's journalist Paul Tassi chiming in about why he thinks that people are not understanding the raw basics of it. They just didn't sell enough games. They straight up said, hey, we're selling games, we have hype, we have numbers, we have fans that are dedicated to us, but we're just not able to compensate for how much it costs to make this stuff. Being on a singular platform, even if it, let, let's actually assume that PlayStation is paying 20%. Let's assume that Sony is stepping in and saying, hey, if you put FF7 Rebirth or FF16 exclusively on our platform and it costs, just for easy math, let's say it costs $300 million to make. That means they're paying, what, $175 million to have that as an exclusive. That's a lot. Or even if they are just taking over the marketing branch, that is still hundreds of millions of dollars saved because marketing is very expensive. I still think it's bizarre to think that as big as these titles have been, as successful as FF16 has been just when it comes to conversation and hype and for raw sales in general, it's not enough to keep up with these hundreds of million dollar budgets. Look at this. Your headline is straight misinformation. Uh, Zuby Tech, very, uh, I like him. He tweets a lot of stuff that's very PlayStation centric. Uh, he kind of defends PlayStation more than your typical person, though. Profit dropped. They announced a multi platform plan. They cite low profitability. I don't know what else you need. They cited specifically why, as reposted, because two seg segments saw profit declines does not mean they're entirely responsible for profit declines. And sales increasing are not the same as profits. You're not reading this correctly. Essentially, I have seen some PlayStation fans in general a bit confused by this push because it does seem like Sony is in an odd spot. PlayStation is gigantic. The PS5, if you actually look at console sales numbers, they go up and up and up. I mean, just in general, the PlayStation is the biggest console on the planet. I think the Nintendo Switch obviously still is earning a ton of money, but sales of the, the Nintendo Switch have been down because there's no real big Nintendo Switch games this year. There's not like a new Pokemon or a Mario or a Zelda, like the typical system sellers. There's nothing like that. And everybody's waiting for the Nintendo Switch 2, so nobody's buying the Nintendo Switch. So if you're actually talking about the most active spending consumer base in the gamer console market, it is the PlayStation 5. So I think Sony betting on this partnership was a smart move that just didn't pan out. I think everybody is still trying to make games as a service. 
And Square Enix has had some very unsuccessful games as a service over the last couple of years. Not just Foam Stars, but they tried, what the heck was, I can't remember, Babylon's Fall. They did like an online MMO, terrible, oh God, you would equip a bunch of swords at once. I'm not even going to explain what Babylon's Fall is because I'm the only person that played it. And then it just got deleted off the internet and they shut down that company as well. Square Enix is in an odd spot where I do think this experiment will work. And I want to explain why. A lot of people go to Walmart at like 6 p.m., right? Okay, I'm going to make an analogy here. So you go to Walmart at 6 p.m., even if a lot of times they are 24 hours. You could technically go there at 6 a.m. or 3 a.m. or midnight, or you could go there at 3 p.m. But here's my point. A 24-hour business gets more business. It gets more foot traffic because you're not worried. Are they open? Oh, I need this. Oh, there's this 24 hours, uh, 24 hour store up the road. Let's just go there. My thinking is this. When you go fully multi-platform, your sales increase across the board, not just on your particular platform. I, I think this is actually going to lead to more PS5 sales. It's going to lead to more PC sales. I, I don't think it's going to really sell anything on Xbox. But it'll even sell more on Nintendo Switch because now people don't have to wonder, is the game on my preferred platform? If you know everything they're doing is multi-platform, I think it does encourage you to be more instinctual in your purchase. Okay, I'm not going to have to research, when's this coming out? What system? What is the DLC? Does it have platform specific content. I genuinely do believe that multi-platform games sell better, not just because they're in more places, but because it's easier to understand for the casual consumer, which is a huge demographic, where and when you can buy it. But these have just been some off-the-cuff thoughts. Personally, as a big Square Enix simp, I think this is fantastic. Honestly, I love, love, love Final Fantasy. So if more people can play it, especially PC side, I think this is a gigantic W. And a lot of the comments online seem to be very positive about this as well. But what do you guys think about the future of Square Enix? And is this enough to save it? I don't think they're in trouble. I don't think they're going to get acquired. But in their current circumstance, they definitely uh, could be more in the green. Thank you for watching. If you could give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. Oh man, God, I can't believe I, I've played so many good and bad Square Enix games, but the amount of them that have just already been vanished into the ether is, uh, is kind of weird to think about. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.